By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to create SnapFit cases in Fusion 360. We'll take a look at modeling the SnapFit connections for a 3D printable Raspberry Pi case. However, these SnapFit connections could be used in several projects. Be sure to stick around until the very end of this video, where I'll show you a pro trick to make sure your plastic cases stay aligned while you snap them together. To help model the case, I'm going to use this pre-built CAD model of the Raspberry Pi that I found on GrabCAD. This is the fourth version of the Raspberry Pi, so if you're modeling a case for a different version or for an Arduino, then you'll want to make sure you modify it accordingly. I'll put a link to the GrabCAD download on this tutorial's resource page, along with some other resources that can be found at productdesignonline.com forward slash number 13. That's productdesignonline.com forward slash one three. The GrabCAD file that I found is a step file and you'll see after importing the file, there are several different components and parts that make up this file. To simplify the design file for the 3D printable case, I'm going to create a new file and then insert the imported file. I'll simply click the new design plus symbol above the toolbar. Then, before we can insert the design file, we'll have to save the file as this is required. Otherwise, you'll be prompted that you can't insert into the current design. I'll simply click the save button and then I'll type out Raspberry Pi number four and then case. Then, I'll hit that blue save button to save the file. If I now toggle open the data panel, you'll see that I'm able to right click on the imported step file and I can select insert into current design. This will then give us the option to rotate or alter the scale of the object. I want this case to be sitting right side up, so I'm going to drag the rotation slider until it snaps into place at 90 degrees. Then I'll click the OK button to confirm the rotation change. You'll now see that we have this linked subassembly folder with all of the original components nested underneath. Now you could have simply created a new component and nested the Raspberry Pi files underneath. However, I like to keep design files separated as much as possible by using these linked instances. This way, if I use the file in other projects, I only have to worry about updating the one master file. I'll now create a new component for the plastic case and then we'll get started with modeling the case. I'll select the assemble dropdown list and then I'll select new component. I'll simply rename this plastic case before clicking the OK button. Before starting the main box shape, we'll want to make sure the existing model is in the correct place. Looking at the front view of the model, you'll see that the bottom of the Raspberry Pi model is slightly below our bottom origin plane. We'll want to move this up, leaving enough room for the thickness of our case. I'm going to right click on the Raspberry Pi component in the Fusion 360 browser. Then I'll select the move slash copy option, or you can always hit the keyboard shortcut letter M as in Mike. If I type out two and a half millimeters, you'll see that puts the bottom flush with the origin plane. However, we want this to be moved an additional three to five millimeters, factoring in the thickness of our box. I'm going to make my case enclosure three and a half millimeters thick, so I'll type out a total of six millimeters. Then I'll click the OK button to confirm the results. I'll now hit the keyboard shortcut letter R as in Romeo to activate the rectangle command. Before doing anything, you'll see that I'm prompted with a question of whether I want to capture the current position of the model. Because I recently changed the position of the model, which I would like to keep, I'll select the capture position button. Should you ever accidentally move a component around, you can hit the continue button which will place the component back in its original position. Now that the rectangle tool is activated, we'll need to select an origin plane to start the sketch on. 
I'm going to toggle open the origin folder and I'll select the bottom XY origin plane. Then, before clicking anything, I'll be sure to select the center rectangle and the sketch palette. This will allow us to start the rectangle by clicking on the center origin point. For the height, I'll type out 64 millimeters, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Then, for the length, I'll type out 93 millimeters. Then, I'll hit the Enter key on my keyboard to place the rectangle. I'm now going to extrude this rectangle into a three dimensional box. We'll then want to shell the box, create the holes on the box, and then we'll cut it in half followed by creating the snap fit joints. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E as in echo to activate the extrude command. Then I'll type out 30 millimeters for the height, followed by clicking the OK button. As we work with our plastic case, we want to be aware of our inner parts. Therefore, I'm going to lower the opacity of this case component. I'll simply right click on the plastic case component and then I'll select the opacity flyout folder. You'll then be able to select the 60% setting, which allows us to work with the model while still being able to see the inside. Before shelling this box, I'm going to apply fillets to the outside so it has nice rounded edges. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter F as in Foxtrot to activate the fillet command. I'll select the four vertical edges and I'll type out a fillet radius of five millimeters. And I can look at this model from the top view to ensure that I'm not going too far in. It looks good for now, so I'm going to hit the plus symbol in the fillet dialog box. This will let us create some more fillets on the remaining edges. Before selecting anything, I'm going to look at the model from the home position. Then, I'm going to click on the Select drop down menu so I can select the Selection Priority flyout folder, where I'll click on the option that says Select Edge Priority. This will let me select the top four and the bottom four edges without worrying about selecting any of the faces by accident. I'm going to then type out a fillet radius of 2.5 millimeters, followed by clicking the OK button. At this point, we can hollow out this solid cube by using the shell command. I'll activate the shell command from the modify dropdown list. To ensure we shell only the inside without removing one of the faces, we'll need to select the body of the plastic case. If you're having trouble selecting just the body, then you can always select it in the Fusion 360 browser, which will ensure there is no possibility of selecting the face. After the body is selected, I'll type out a shell thickness of 3.5 millimeters, which will represent the thickness of the walls of our case. I'll make sure the direction is set to inside, and then I'll click the OK button. Looking at the model in its current state, we can somewhat tell that a Raspberry Pi has enough room around it. However, we can always use the section analysis to take a better look. I'll select the Inspect drop-down list, then I'll activate the Section Analysis. I'll then select the YZ plane for the Faces selection. This will let us essentially cut the model in half to take a closer look at it. It appears that everything fits within this plastic case from this perspective, as the components on the ends here will end up having slots cut out for them. I'm going to also check the section analysis in the other direction. I'll turn off this first one by selecting its corresponding light bulb in the Fusion 360 browser. Then, I'll right click and select Repeat Section Analysis. This time, I'll select the YZ origin plane before clicking OK. If I now look at the right side of the view cube, you'll see that this side of the model appears to be okay as well. We see some other components that we'll need to create holes for. Lastly, we may want to create a third section analysis for the top view. 
We can then use all three of these as we continue to work on the model, giving us the ability to quickly monitor our inside components. I'm going to first turn off this section analysis. Then I'll rename it by selecting it in the Fusion 360 browser, and I'll click a second time, which lets us rename it. I'll name this one width, and I'll quickly rename the first one length. I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut letter S for the shortcuts box, and I'll type section, which gives us the section analysis option at the top. I'll simply click the Enter key on my keyboard to select it. Then I'm going to select the top of the model, and I'll just drag the blue single directional arrow down about five or six millimeters. Now the height doesn't matter as long as I can see into the inside of the case. Lastly, I'll be sure to click the OK button to confirm this section analysis. I'll also rename this one top in the Fusion 360 browser. Now that we can see through the top, let's create some pegs that will run through the holes on the Raspberry Pi's board. This will help keep the board in place as it sits in the case preventing it from moving around. We're going to reference the circle cutouts on the imported model. To do this, we'll use the project command, which will let us project the geometry into a two-dimensional sketch. I'll select the sketch dropdown list, and then I'll find the project slash include folder near the bottom of the list. Then I'll select the top face of the bottom side of our plastic case. You'll notice the body of my plastic case component is highlighting in the browser, which confirms that I'm selecting the correct face. Now that I have the project command activated and I've chosen a sketch plane, I can select the four inner circles followed by clicking the OK button. You'll now see that we have purple sketch geometry, which signifies that it's driven by something or in our case, this original Raspberry Pi model. We can now select the offset command from the sketch dropdown list. This time, I'll select one of the projected circles. Then, I'll type out an offset distance of negative 0.3 millimeters, which equals a tolerance of 0.6 millimeters since we're dealing with the diameter of a circle. You'll want to make sure that you use the negative symbol in front of the value, or you can use the flip button to ensure that the circle is on the inside. Then we'll click OK to confirm the results. Unfortunately, Fusion 360 won't always let us offset multiple projections at once, so I'm going to right click to do the repeat offset command, and I'll repeat these steps to do the same offset for the other three circles. Now that I'm done with the offsets, I'll hit the extrude icon in the toolbar. I'll select all four circles. Then I'll extrude these up a distance of five millimeters and I'll click the OK button. Now that we have the pins in place, we'll take a look at making the cutouts for all of the power connectors, HDMI, and other slots on the Raspberry Pi. But first, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, then go ahead and click that like button. And be honest, if you're not enjoying it, then click that dislike button. If you want to see more 3D printing related tutorials, then comment the word PRINT in all caps down below. We could create a sketch on the right side of the model. However, I'm going to create an offset plane so it's a new sketch that's not directly tied to this face of the model in case I change the overall shape later down the road. I'll simply select the offset plane in the toolbar and then I'll select the right face. After the value is set to zero millimeters, I'll click OK. We can now toggle open the construction folder in the browser, which will let us right click and select Create Sketch. To create the cutout for the Ethernet port in these USB ports, we'll want to project some reference geometry 
which will help us ensure our cutout is large enough. To help us better project the reference geometry, we can turn on our width section analysis. You'll see that after I click the light bulb that it cuts it in half as we initially set it up to the YZ plane. To make this more useful, I'll right click on it in the browser and I'll select edit. I'm simply going to drag the blue single directional arrow towards the right side until I can see the three connectors being sliced in half or about 32 millimeters. Then I'll click OK. I'll now hit the keyboard shortcut letter P as in Papa to activate the project command. I'm also going to make sure to look at the model from an angle so I can see what I'm selecting. Watch as I select the first connector. You'll notice it projects a square to the active sketch plane. I'll go ahead and click on the next two before clicking the OK button in the project dialog box. Now that we have the shape of the connectors, we'll need to offset the geometry to factor in some room for a small tolerance. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter O as in Oscar, and I'll offset the first square a distance of one millimeter to the outside before clicking the OK button. Then I'll have to right click to select repeat offset, and I'll repeat the last two steps for these remaining two squares making sure that they're both offset one millimeter away from the projected geometry. We can now hit the extrude feature in the toolbar. Then we'll need to select all of the profiles to extrude so we can cut them away from the outer case. After the profiles are selected, I'm going to switch to the top section analysis. Then I'll rotate the model around so I can click on the inner wall. But first, I'll make sure the operation is set to cut. I'll also make sure the extent type is set to two object and I'll select the interface of the plastic case. Lastly, we'll want to make sure to toggle open the objects to cut option. You'll notice that because our Raspberry Pi is contained within its own component or subassembly, we don't have to worry about accidentally cutting into it. Throughout your time modeling this case, you may find it helpful to activate the top level component to take a look at the model without the Raspberry Pi component being ghosted. Just remember to reactivate the case component before continuing to work on it. To create the slot on the other side for the USB-C and micro HDMI ports, we could follow the same process by projecting their geometry. An alternative would be to create one slot that covers all four ports on the side. I'll quickly walk you through this process so you're aware of a different approach. I'm going to select the sketch dropdown list and I'll find the slot flyout folder. The slot commands let us quickly create rounded rectangles or slot cutouts. I'm going to select the overall slot. Then we'll need to click on the front face of the case component. The overall slot command requires us to define the start and end point of the slot, and then we can define the overall width. I'll click around the midpoint of the audio jack, making sure to click on the right side of it. Then for the second point, I'll click just past the USB-C port. As I now drag my mouse cursor out, you'll see that we can define the width by typing out a value. I'll type out six and a half millimeters and then I'll click to place the slot. Once again, we'll extrude cut this by selecting the extrude command. I'll select the slot profile and then I'll turn the top section analysis on again. This will let me set the extent type as two object. Then, if I click the inside wall, you'll see that Fusion is smart enough to switch this to a cut operation. We can then click the OK button to confirm the results. As you'll see, this option is not quite as clean looking as cutting out a hole for each individual component. However, this method is a lot simpler and requires less work. 
Lastly, we'll need to cut out a slot for the micro SD card that is on the bottom of the board. If I look at the left side of the model, you'll see the card slot is at the bottom center. To cut out this hole, I'm simply going to cut out a rectangle that runs up to the bottom edge of the case. I'll select the center rectangle from the sketch dropdown list. Then, I'm going to click on the left base of the case. I'll select the center origin point and I'll drag out with my mouse. I'll make this rectangle 12 millimeters in height and 16 millimeters in width. I'll activate the extrude command and then I'll select the rectangle profile. Because your fingers will run along this lip while you insert the micro SD card, you'll want to round over these edges. I'll activate the model fillet command and then I'll add a fillet of 2 millimeters to the surrounding edges. Now that we have all the cutouts complete, I'm going to turn on the full opacity and turn off all the section analysis options. At this point, we can finish off the case by slicing it into two parts, and then we'll create some snap fit joints. To split the case in half, we'll use the split body command. First, we'll need to create a construction plane that we can reference as the splitting tool. To set up the construction plane, we'll use the mid plane option, which will ensure that our plane always stays in the middle of the case. After selecting the midplane option from the construct dropdown list, we'll be prompted to select the planes. I'll select the top face and the bottom face, which places the midplane directly in the middle. Then I'll click the OK button. We can now activate the split body tool in the modify dropdown list. We'll need to select the case body as the body to split. Then, we'll need to select the splitting tool selector and select the construction plane as the splitting tool. You'll also want to make sure the extend splitting tools option is selected as that will make sure that the case is completely split even if we update its size. After clicking OK, you'll see that we have two new bodies. I'll go ahead and rename these top and bottom in the browser so I'm aware of what bodies I'm working with later on. We can also click the light bulb for the midplane construction plane to hide it now that we're done using it. If I hide the top body, you'll see that we now have successfully split our case into two parts, so one can 3D print each part with the flat side on the build plate. Let's go ahead and finish off this model by adding the snaps. The first thing we want to consider while adding snaps is where the snaps will go. Looking at the model, you'll see we'll need to be aware of the internal components of the Raspberry Pi. When possible, I always like to make the snaps directly across from one another, as that typically provides for a better experience getting them to snap together. Given those requirements, it looks like we can squeeze a snap into the area between these connectors and then we can put one on the opposite side. There are many types of snap fit joints, but for this particular tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a cantilever style joint. In general, snap fits will encounter the most amount of stress during the attachment. To reduce the amount of stress, we want to design this so the joint returns to its neutral position once the joining process is completed. Then, once the parts are together, an undercut will hold them together. Let's start by cutting out an undercut on the sidewall of the case. I'm going to activate the line tool and I'll click on the front face to create a new sketch. Then, I'm going to turn on the construction option and I'll create a construction line running 4 millimeters down from the top. 
I'm also going to use the dimension tool to add a dimension from the endpoint of the line to the edge of the inner component. Making sure our hole on the opposite side doesn't conflict with that. Then I'll be sure to turn off the construction option. Next, I'll activate the center rectangle command and I'll start the rectangle at the endpoint of the construction line. I'm going to make this rectangle 6 mm wide by 3 mm tall. Then we'll extrude cut this rectangle out of the box. Once again, making sure that its extent type is set to the inside wall of this case. We're going to mirror this to the other side once we get the cantilever portion completed. I'll now turn the top body back on by selecting it in the browser. Then I'm going to turn the width section analysis back on. I'm going to right click to edit the section analysis and I'll drag it over until it's lined up with our cutout so we can see what we're doing. I'll now create an offset construction plane off this inside wall of the cutout to make this 0.5 millimeters, factoring in a small tolerance. We'll then need to right click on the construction plane in the browser to select Create Sketch. I'm also going to hide the Raspberry Pi component so it's out of the way. Then I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter P as in Papa to activate the project command. I'm going to select the top, bottom, and cross lines so we can reference these projected lines, which will let us snap to it with the other sketch geometry. I'll now be able to activate the line command in the toolbar. And because of these projected edge lines, we can easily start the sketch off the corner. I'm going to make a line going up with a distance of 8 millimeters. Then I'll go to the right 2 millimeters. Next, I'll go down 10 millimeters. I'll go to the left 6 millimeters. I'll go back up 2 millimeters where it snaps in with the line. And then I'll connect this line over to the original starting point. We'll now want to extrude this profile and then we'll finalize it by adding some fillets and chamfers. I'll hit the extrude button in the toolbar and then I'll select the profiles that make up the shape and I'll type out 5 millimeters for the thickness. I'm also going to make sure the operation is set to join and I'll hide the bottom body so it only joins to the top body. Then I'll click OK. At this point, we'll want to add some chamfers to the snap. I'll start by selecting the chamfer tool from the modify dropdown list. Then I'll select the bottom front edge. I'm going to make this chamfer 2 millimeters and I'll click OK. Then I'll right click and select repeat chamfer. This time I'll add a chamfer of 1 mm to the top front edge and then I'll click OK. Finally, I'll add a third chamfer to the inner side where the stem is attached to the top case body. This will allow the top portion of the case to 3D print better with an angle instead of an undercut. I'll make this one 2 mm or the thickness of this stem and then I'll click OK. Lastly, I want to add a fillet to the inner edge of this snap. This will strengthen it a bit more and make sure it slides along the undercut. I'll activate the fillet command from the modify dropdown list and then I'll make this a fillet of 0.5 millimeters. We can now turn the bottom body back on so we can add the same fillet radius to the inner edge of the cutout. I'll reactivate the fillet command and I'll select the inner edge to create a fillet radius of 0.5 millimeters. Looking at this snap on screen, it appears that this snap cantilever is pretty large. However, if I inspect it, you'll see that it appears to be much larger on screen 
as its true size is only about two and a half to three millimeters. I've also found that nylon 3D printer filament works best when creating objects with snappable parts. I've put a link to my favorite nylon filament on the resource page for this tutorial. I should also note that this particular snap design is intended to hold two parts together for a long period of time, and it's not the best snap fit if you're looking for something to take apart daily. Let's now go ahead and mirror these features to the other side so we can have a snap on each side of the box. I'll activate the mirror command from the create dropdown list. Then I'll set the pattern type to the features option. This will let us first mirror the extrude cutout that we created earlier. I'm going to separate this mirror from the rest of the features, as it's likely that Fusion 360 would have trouble computing all of them at once. I'll select the XZ plane as the mirror plane, and then I'll click OK. After the cutout is mirrored, we'll need to mirror the rest of the features. I'm going to hold down the Command key on my keyboard, Use the control key if you're on Windows, and then I'll select the last extrude, the three chamfer icons, and then the first fillet icon to be used as the mirror results. We then have to select our mirror plane. Once again, I'll select the XZ origin plane, and then I'll click OK. Instead of mirroring the fillet of the inner wall, we can just edit the last fillet feature and select the other edge. First, we'll need to drag the fillet to the last spot in the timeline so it appears after the mirror results. Then, we'll need to double click to edit the fillet. I'll select the plus symbol and then I'll add a fillet of 0.5 millimeters to this other edge. We can now switch our section analysis to the top view. I'll also turn the pie component back on. And you'll see that we now have these nice snap fit features in addition to all of our cutouts. The last tip that I want to share with you in this tutorial is how to create a nice edge that will help you align the top and bottom pieces as you're trying to snap them together. I'll turn off the section analysis and then I'll hide the top body and the Pi component. I'm going to then hit the keyboard shortcut letter O as in Oscar to activate the offset command. I'll then select the top face. I'll select the outer edge and I'll type out negative 1.25. We're going to extrude this profile up just two millimeters so we can create a ridge that will cut away from the other body. I'm also going to add a fillet radius of 0.5 millimeters to both edges, which gives it a nice round over. At this point, we'll need to subtract this new addition from the top body. I'm going to turn the top body back on. Then, I'll select the Combine Body tool from the Modify drop-down list. I'll select the top body as the target body, and I'll select the bottom body as the splitting tool. I'll set the operation to Cut, and then the most important part here is to make sure that you check the Keep Tools option, as we want to keep this bottom body after it's used to cut the cavity out of the top. Let's click OK to see what happens. If we hide the bottom body and look at the top one, you'll see that we have now cut out the negative part of the groove. Ultimately, this subtle feature we just added will make a huge difference in helping each half of the case line up when we're trying to snap them together. To summarize, in about a half hour or so, we were able to create this fairly complex Raspberry Pi or Arduino case that snaps together. You may also want to consider customizing the case by adding your name, logo, or project name to the top of the lid. You could also further develop the design by adding more snaps for durability, vent holes, ribs, or other features to enhance the plastic casing. 
If you made it to the end of this video, then let me and the community know by commenting below if you have ever used an Arduino or Raspberry Pi for a project. As always, I truly appreciate you taking the time to watch this tutorial. Click that thumbs up icon if you want more free content and click on that playlist in the lower right hand corner to watch more 3D printing and Fusion 360 tutorials. To be part of the product design online community, be sure to subscribe and check us out on Patreon by clicking that Patreon logo right now.